in other words the product of a and v which we can see is going to be a vector would be the same as the scalar lambda multiplied by that same vector v so this is um, the property that we're looking for and uh, these properties are extremely important in linear algebra there are several problems uh, you're able to solve uh, if you have um, your uh, objects having uh, this set of properties connected in this particular way and so let's look at how we can get this uh, set of V's and lambdas so the statement I X will return for us um, if we ask it to two um, outputs here with V being the matrix uh, in which we are writing the um, the eigenvectors in the column space and D being the matrix for which the diagonal contains the corresponding eigenvalues. So let's uh, let's try and find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for this matrix A. So we've still got the matrix A there. Let's just clear that. We've, we've got matrix A and if we issue the statement V comma D is eig A then we can see here we've got this uh, these two matrices and let's test to see whether these are indeed uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues right as we say they must satisfy this property here so let's let's do that um, so let's take the first column here um, so we know the eigenvectors are written in the column space so the first column is our first eigenvector and that corresponds to this eigenvalue here so let's test it let's say a times v that's big v and uh, let's pull out that first column so to do that of course we uh, we specify in the first dimension that we want everything in that first dimension and we want right the first dimension runs down the rows and uh, in the second dimension we specify the column must be the first column so that's pulled out for us the first vector and uh, let's let's find that so that's the result there and then if we ask for the right hand side right we worked out a v so the right hand side is lambda times v so if we pull out the lambda value which is sitting on the diagonal right that's the first value for lambda and if we multiply that with that first vector then that's the result we get and we can see those numbers are effectively the same in other words we do have this property that uh, AV is lambda V in other words uh, V and lambda are indeed eigenvalues and the eigen uh, vectors uh, sorry uh, eigen vectors and an eigenvalue of uh, the matrix A um, and of course we, we can just uh, write it in this way yeah. let's just write it this way A times V uh, everything down the first column minus um, D in the corner there times the first column okay so you can see very small numbers here this is effectively um, a vector of zeros in other words these two are the same in other words uh, this equation is holding for at least that first vector so let's look at the other vectors and the other values let's just generalize this first so I'm just going to work on the same line to do that so I'm going to set I to 1 on this line and I'm going to use I here for all these quantities I I so that's the vector of, uh, of a, that's a vector that's very close to the zero vector and then let's look at the second column vector and the second entry down the diagonal and you see that's also very close to the zero vector in other words the second column is also an eigenvector that corresponds to that uh, eigenvalue and uh, looking at the third column that's also an eigen uh, an eigenvalue and an eigenvector and the fourth column and the fourth value down the diagonal D um, that's very close to zero so this is uh, equal to that uh, approximately equal to that and so that's also true so the eig function very powerful we can get our, our, our eigenvalues and eigenvectors out there right then looking at uh, alu factorization right um, 
let's clear the screen. Here's matrix A. And uh, we often want to find the uh, LU factorization in doing our linear algebra. And uh, if, we, if memory serves, L and U are matrices such that uh, L is a lower triangular matrix and U is an upper triangular matrix. And the product of these two uh, is nothing but the original matrix. So that's a factorization of this matrix into L and U. So in MATLAB, there's an LU command, and that will return for us three arguments, um, namely L and U, and then the permutation matrix. Right, we know that sometimes uh, the matrix X is not uh, of the right form. We might have to do some row swapping to avoid any zeros on the, di on the diagonal. So uh, sometimes we need that permutation matrix P. Um, so using the permutation matrix, um, this is the form that we expect, right? That uh, P times X should be L times U, uh, where L and U are the lower and upper matrices, uh, respectively. So let's look at that. Um, so let's do that on matrix A. So if we expect to get L, U, and P, then that's equal to LU, so it's a uh, lowercase, this function is a lowercase. So LU of matrix A, so that's our set of uh, matrices there. So just looking at these things, you can see here, this is a lower triangular matrix. Um, you've got zeros up here in this corner, and uh, after the diagonal, you have non-zero entries. So this is indeed a lower triangle matrix, and uh, uh, you here, you can see zeros below the diagonal and uh, non-zeros above uh, and on. So that uh, these are uh, lower and upper uh, triangular matrices. And uh, P here, uh, you can see um, it's a, a matrix of zeros and ones where we've got um, we've got for uh, we, we've got if the dimension for that is n then we've got n ones so that does look like a transformation matrix to us so at least the form of these things is correct uh, let's check to see if uh, if it satisfies the important property we're looking for namely this one so let's take p times x let's take p times x oops um, of course, I'm working with matrix A, so I'm, um, I'm not using X, which, I, which is what I've written in the notes. So it's P times A, right? We get that, and then L times U is that. So we can see these things look to be the same. Let's just test it. Uh, P times A minus L times U. And so you can see that's a very small uh, set of numbers, so that's quite accurate. L and U are indeed the... Uh, the LU factorizations of matrix A, where we had to uh, do some, some row swapping in A. So that's our LU factorization. Um, the, the last one we'll look at in the set is the QR decomposition. So in QR, um, we require that we produce the matrices Q and R, where Q has the important property that it's an orthogonal matrix. That means the inverse of that matrix is equal to the transpose of that matrix, and R is an upper triangular matrix. So this is a different kind of factorization to LU. That's QR decomposition. So let's look at the results there. And, uh, and so let's just clear this. And Q comma R is equal to QR of A. And so we can see R has the uh, has the property that it's an upper triangular matrix. That's fine. We can't say anything about uh, this form of Q. We didn't know what to expect in terms of what it looked like, but we do require that this is um, is an orthogonal matrix. So let's just check that. So Q times Q transposed ought to ought to give us. Um, an identity matrix, right? Because Q transposed must be equal to the inverse of Q, so Q times its inverse must be the identity matrix. And you can see we get the identity matrix here. So Q is indeed orthogonal. Uh, of course, the other way to check that is 
just invert Q and uh, compare that with Q transposed. And uh, you can see uh, these are all very small numbers, so these two are very close together. So indeed, uh, Q is uh, an orthogonal matrix, and R is an upper triangular matrix. And uh, the, the property that we require in addition is that the product of those two must equal that matrix. So Q times R is that. And if we look at matrix A, uh, it's that. So, uh, and of course, let's do the usual Q times R minus A. That's effectively zeros. So uh, we have indeed correctly factorized A into Q and R, where Q is orthogonal and R is upper triangular. Right, so that's an extremely powerful set of, uh, of commands that we have, uh, of functions we have available to us. And that uh, truly does accelerate any operations we might try to do in linear algebra. There are more operations that we'll need later, but these are some of, these are, you can say, the bread and butter of linear algebra.